Okay guys, so the other day, I talked about an experience of when I tried to astral project. I didn't buy me. Oh, okay. Digress. Step back. I didn't try to astral project. I tried to teleport and then I astral projected. I know teleportation sounds a bit far-fetched. It's not going to stop me from trying anyway. <laughs> but upon trying to teleport, I accidentally left my body instead because I altered the teleportation technique which I pulled offline. So what I decided to do today was make good on my promise. I'm gonna tell you guys the altered version which caused me to leave my body. And because of the release of Doctor Strange, which will be coming out on November the 4th in the UK, and I don't know when it's coming out in the USA, but the main character power of Doctor Strange is astral projection. So what better time than to teach you guys how to do what him and I and others do than to make this video now. And hopefully, hopefully nothing will go wrong. And when I say that, I mean by the editing process, the microphone, this is the third time I'm making this video. Please go right. Okay, so I printed them out. Here we have seven. We got really fast, so you can't print great. No, okay. <laughs> That's a bit mean. But here are seven, okay? There is a pre-exercise first, though, a little bit of prep. Now, if you've seen my video on how to open your third eye, then you can skip this next bit. I just want to make sure you guys can feel energy outside of your body so that when you do get to the other steps later on, you'll be able to do them properly, you know? Now this deals with Qi, or in other words, Qi or life force energy. So many names. Vril, also the Germans called it, in order to power the spaceships. Okay, back to the main topic at hand. Hand, yeah, no pun intended. <laughs> what you want to do is you take your left hand and then you take your right hand. Now it's important to notice the fact the energy wants to pull your hand forward and outwards with your breathing. Let's make it a bit more simpler. The very first thing you want to do is move your hand from your elbows, not from your wrist and not from using the muscles within your hand. Okay. Now the reason as to why you want to do that is because you want to notice the energy pulling your hand you don't want to be paying attention on moving the muscle itself. If you're focusing too much on moving the muscles, you're not going to be able to notice the energy that's pulling your hand back and forth, okay? At any point of time that you're noticing that you're focusing on moving physically too much, stop and start again. Because otherwise, it's gonna get really frustrating for you to feel something that you're going to perceive as not being there because you're focusing on what's already there, which is the muscle tissue. Okay, so what you do is you take your elbows to move your hands, you bring them close, and then you just hold them there. You slowly breathe in through your nose, and it should feel as if your hands want to be pulled inwards towards each other. Now, imagine if you will your nose being about this big, right? <laughs> like a big nose, and it's outside of your body. Okay, well, it's protruding from your body, still attached to your body. And that nose is right in between your hands. Now, when you breathe in through your nose, if it's that big, that means you're breathing in energy coming this way, right? Inwards, towards you, not up through this little nose here. Keep that in mind when you're trying to breathe in order to feel the energy pull your hands towards each other. You wanna use this entire space as if you've got this giant nose in order to breathe, which then causes the energy to flow towards you, okay? This will also cause your hands to collapse into each other as the energy comes inward. I'm using the nose as an example because it's something you're already used to using. It's something that's on your face. And as people breathe, they often breathe and they focus all of their effort on breathing in through their nostrils. This small little gap right here, they don't focus on breathing in from a uh, greater, I guess, space that's in front of them. The best way after you've done that and you've noticed that you can actually increase the amount of pull through breathing in in that manner, the best way to then increase the amount of pull is to breathe within your hands. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit further away from this space in front of you. That's why I use the nose as an example, because it's here. You need to breathe as if you can breathe in your palm rather than breathing in through your nose. Okay, so what you do is you bring it out here and you go. And when you do that, you'll actually feel your palms becoming hot. They may tingle. Energy will be pulled inward when you breathe inwards. Okay, 
When you have both hands out like this and you breathe inwards, it actually causes a bubble, or it will feel like a bubble. Okay, what's actually happening is energy is coming up one side and down the other. So up the back, down the front, up the front and down the back. Okay. So you got these hands now, right? They're supercharged. You're breathing in. And you're breathing out. When you breathe out, it's like you're breathing out air out of your nose, but you're doing it out of your hands. So you breathe out with the intent to feel the air coming out of your hands. Breathe in intent to feel the air coming into your hands. Then what you want to do is you want to slowly use your elbows to pull your hands apart very slowly and just pay attention to the fact that you can feel the pull in between your hands that's trying to collapse your hands together. And then you slowly bring your hands inward and you'll feel a lot of resistance there. Then what you want to do is you can take it one step further. You can use your right hand and then you bring it up and you'll feel it wants to go up faster than you're allowing it to go up. And then you bring it down and there's some drag there, right? That's because you're going against the current. Like I said, on your left hand, the energy comes up the front of the palm and down the back. This hand's the opposite. Okay, this hand goes down the front of the palm and up the back. So as you go downwards, you feel some resistance there. Now, sometimes the flow will change. Sometimes it'll come up the back and down. Sometimes it'll come up the front and down, depending on how your body how your energy system is set up. Everyone's body is different because their bodies aren't always in rhythm. It's not always in flow. It's not always flowing the way it should be. And that's why people get ill. Okay. So if you notice that it's not resisting and it's actually going the other way, then it's because there's something wrong with your body. Now you can fix this through certain Qigong exercises. And I may actually start uploading those regularly on my YouTube channel to help you guys become more informed with these energy pathways. Okay. Now when it's coming up, and then you come down, you want to go around in a circle. And again, you'll notice how your hand wants to automatically go around in a circle without you really putting any effort into this, right? Then you're pretty much done. The preparation is somewhat over. I say somewhat because later on, you're going to start feeling this energy between your hands with your entire body. Okay, so let's get into these seven steps. First, you want to change the surface of the floor, okay, to either a towel or a yoga mat. On my floor back at home, I had it separated. One side was carpet, one side was hardwood. Okay. So you want to basically recreate something like that. Stand on a towel or stand on a yoga mat. That's your first step. It's real simple. Second, set the intention to move your body from one location to another. Okay. Now I say body because a lot of people think that the awareness residing within their body is their body. Or for example, if I was to squeeze my hand to the point where I can feel some sort of dull ache, that awareness within my hand, some people would class as their body. When really it's just awareness, it's bioelectrical signals within my nervous system, within the palm of my hand, which is causing me to feel the surrounding inflamed area. Without awareness, you won't be able to feel anything in your body. This is how yogis turn off their pain receptors within their nerves. They just stop feeling it mentally, and then they're fine. They can even start prodding and sticking large, large, very large, disgusting nails into their face, hand, arm, and I've seen some weird stuff on the internet. As you're standing there though, you haven't moved yet, feel into your body, your awareness. Just drop down into the body, feel your heart, feel your organs. Feel every well, extremity of your body. This will cause you to better gather all of the energy or consciousness within your vessel, which will allow you to move more of yourself outside of the body. But not yet. You're still standing there on your yoga mat or towel. Thirdly, notice, let me just flip off my flip flops. Feel the carpet under your feet or your yoga mat or your towel. Just notice and pay attention to how it feels to be stood in that specific position in your room, feeling the temperature and the fibers of whatever it is that you're standing on. It's very important. Okay. The reason why you want to pay attention to your location is because you want to get that sense of feeling of what it feels like to stand in your location. Now, I don't mean what it looks like when you've closed your eyes and you're like this, and then you move like that, you physically feel 
and mentally, it's like your your coordination changes. You, you feel as if you've been altered. Your position has changed. That is what I mean by that. Okay, so when you're standing there on your surface, feel your location. Feel it in the room. Now, number four, you want to slowly take one step backwards whilst you're feeling your location within the room. The main purpose of this fourth step is to recognize the change of your location as you're taking one step backwards. It should feel different. Just then it felt different for me. Okay, that's perfect. Also, that one step should have put you onto another kind of floor, whether that be your mat or carpet. So if you've been doing this on a yoga mat, you take one step backwards, now you're standing on your carpet. If you've got a hardwood floor, now you're standing on your hardwood floor, okay? Just notice, pay attention to the shift in your location and then also pay attention to the change of temperature on the floor or maybe the texture of the thing that you're standing on. That entire fourth step should feel like a very smooth transition to your next location. Meaning you feel location A, you move backwards into location B, then boom, you're locked in. Now you're just feeling location B. Number five, you want to feel the space in front of you. Now you've all done this before. When somebody's gotten too close to your face and they've, they've probably just eaten a packet of chips, right? And you can probably feel their presence right there. Or maybe you're on the computer and they come up behind your shoulder. They're hovering, right? That's you feeling their presence. You're actually feeling their location, how close they are to you. So what you want to do now, step five, is when you're standing on point B, you basically close your eyes. They should already be closed, by the way, throughout the entire series of steps. Eyes closed. Standing there, point B. Feel the presence in front of you. If you're having a hard time, put your hand out like this. Feel the presence of your hand. Bring it slowly closer in front of you. Feel the location of your hand changing as it gets closer and closer and you can feel the presence getting closer and closer and closer to your face. Just pay attention to the presence in front of you. Now, why are we doing this? Because after you've stood in point A, you should already remember what it feels like to stand there in front of you, okay? So when you feel the presence in front of you, I want you to recall how it felt to stand in point A. Do that and your awareness should shift in front of you. Try to hold that for at least 10 seconds. It should feel as if you've just moved from point B to point A, but you haven't actually physically moved. You've just moved your awareness from point B to point A using your memory of how it used to feel like to stand in point A. If you're having a hard time recalling the location of point A, then I want you to remember what it felt like to stand on that different surface. Then recall your position within the room of point A. Number six, what I want you to do is I want you to bring your awareness back to point B where your physical body is standing then move physically back to point A. Feel the locational awareness, feel the carpet beneath your feet or whatever texture you've got under there and then take one step backwards physically again. Then try to move your awareness back to point A without physically moving. Repeat the process back and forth until you feel sick, okay? You should feel woozy. You should feel as if you're being pulled and backwards and that it's starting to drain you a little bit. Okay, now that's not a bad thing. It just means you're pushing out energy and pulling it back in and it kind of makes you feel a bit woozy. It's pretty, pretty good. Because for step seven, I need you guys to go to bed. And whilst you're laying there, I need you to anticipate the same thing happening just before you go to sleep. So you're anticipating it. You're not setting the intention really. You're just looking out for what you think is going to happen, which is your awareness is going to move from your bed to wherever you were standing. Make that place, that area where you were stood, a sacred place. That would be the place where you practice this teaching almost every day. That will ensure that your subconscious mind knows exactly where to go when you do astral project. I'm Ryan JC, Ryan James Cropper. This has been about it. Okay, this is the teleportation technique. You will dematerialize out of your physical body and then just show up there. This is how I did it. I dematerialized out of my physical body, 
they materialized at the foot of my bed. If you haven't seen that video, then I'll put an annotation on the screen somewhere or in the description below. Now, if you guys want the full astral projection course, okay, which deals with a 10 step technique, different from this one, then you can hop on over to ryancropper.com and you'll find that full course there. Now, one more thing guys, before I let you guys go, I've just recently finished the first draft and the first edit, I'm gonna say edit 1.1 1 .1, because I'm actually editing it again and then I gotta send it out to some people. I've made you guys something, a book. I made you guys a book called Get Connected. It's going to move your awareness into a multi-dimensional state of being, meaning you can think in 4D, 5D, 6D, and even others. It will also help you connect other aspects of yourself, which may have become fragmented from your main uh, central hub of consciousness. Traumas do this, okay? If you'll ever find somebody out there who gets triggered, maybe something gets taken from them, and they're a full-grown adult, then all of a sudden they shift into a childlike state and demand it back. That's because they've got a fracture there, their consciousness is split. Get Connected causes these two fractured consciousnesses to merge back together and connect to integrate. It also deals with shadow integration and other kinds of energy manipulation within the body. Now, why is this important? The more energy you have in your body, the more you can astral project, the more you can do some really strange things, okay? The more you can move your consciousness into other things. The more you'll understand how things are put together because you've understood how you're put together. Telepathy goes on steroids. <laughs> it really does boost up everything that you should already be, but that society has, I guess, t not taken from you, but they've broken you. It's like they've just pulled all the wires out of a TV set and now the TV's not working properly. So I'm going to connect every part of you through this book. Now, if you wanna know how to get your hands on this book, then you can go in the description below and there will be a sign up page so that you can enter in your email so that I can personally give you guys a notification telling you of when the book is being published, okay? Then when you know it's being published, it'll either be published on, well, I know what's gonna happen. It's going to be published first on Kindle, Amazon, all the electronical devices so you can just read it. Then it'll be published as an actual book book, all right? So all of the details will be sent to you as long as you put in your email address so that I can contact you. Guys, it's taken me a year and a half to make this book. It's really important that I do it right. I'm also looking for beta readers. Now these beta readers will get 10 pages each. And I just want them to look through to look for grammar mistakes maybe. Okay, maybe something is, is, is a miss. Maybe something's not there. Maybe a word's missing, which could have made it sound better, more easily understandable. So if you want to test read these 10 pages, then on ryancropper.com, there is a little chat. It's got my face, like a little messenger chat. Okay, if you click on that, you can actually email me through there. I'm Ryan JC, Ryan James Cropper. Happy travels and happy Halloween. I projected last year on Halloween and the moon was Huge, but I guess you'll most likely find out. I'll speak to you guys pretty soon. Peace.